Hey guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, I've got another Python programming example for you. In this video, we'll write a program that uses classes, and we'll do these three things. We're going to review our process, a three step process, for solving a programming problem. Then we're going to use a UML class diagram as part of that process. And then we'll finish up by writing the program. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Right, so here is our three-step process. Step one, understand the problem. This is the most important step out of all three. Step two, plan a solution. Use pseudocode, use UML diagrams, use flowcharting, whatever it takes to come up with a plan. Okay, and then finally, once you have a plan to solve your problem, then you implement the plan, you write the program. Right? So let's examine the problem, okay? So the problem we have here from our textbook um, is this, right? What we have to do is we have to write a class named car that has the following data attributes, okay? So there's gonna be three total. Uh, one is gonna be year underscore model, and that's for holding uh, the car's year model, so like 2005, 2010, 2012, whatever. And that attribute is got two underscores in front of it, right? And that's on purpose. That's to indicate to the programmer or whoever's reading the code that, hey, this is an attribute that's supposed to be private. Now remember, private, public stuff, it's more of suggestions in Python. There's no mechanism within the language to explicitly enforce that. It's a convention more than anything else. Okay, and uh, then we have another attribute, make. That's for the make of the car. So I guess like Toyota, Chevy, whatever, GMC. Uh, two underscores there also. To indicate that it's supposed to be private. And then we got a third attribute, speed. <laughs> Again, private. So the car class should also have an initializer method that accepts the uh, car's your model and make his arguments. So that method is going to need to have three total parameters. There's going to be the ever-present self parameter, and then there's going to be um, a parameter for accepting you know, the model, and then another one for accepting the make as um, arguments, right? So those guys are going to be used to initialize those private uh, variables uh, your model and make. Now the initializer is also going to initialize the speed attribute to zero. So in addition to having those three attributes, the class is going to have three methods. And these three methods don't have any underscores in front of them, so that indicates that, hey, these things are public. They're part of the public uh, interface. And so the programmer that's using this class should feel free to have code, you know, access these methods. Okay, so client code can use these methods um, at will. So once we have our class written, then what we need to do is design a program that's going to create a car object that calls the accelerate method five times. And after each call to the accelerate method, uh, we need to get the current speed of the car and display it. Okay, so once we've done that, then we have to call the brake method five times, and after each call the brake method, get the current speed of the car and display. So quite a bit of repetition in here in the program itself, but nothing too nothing too complicated at all, right? So the explicit requirements are write this class using these names for these attributes and methods, and then invoke these methods, you know, five times. So let's go ahead and fill out our plan here. So we have to create a car object for our program, create, once we've written the class, you know, create a car object. Um, and it didn't tell us what to initialize it with, right? So that initializer is gonna need to have a couple arguments passed to it. In the problem description, it didn't tell us what values those should be. It didn't explicitly spell it out, you know, make it so it's a 2020 um, Toyota Prius or something like that. It didn't say anything like that. So that would be up to you as the student to fill in that information. That's up to you. If it doesn't spell it out, then for my students, I just say, you know, pick whatever value you want. Okay, so create a car object, uh, initialize it, initialize it with something, right? And then once you, we've done that, then, um, you know, we have to do this five times. We have to do this five times what? We have to call the accelerate method. And then we have to um, print the speed. Right? Let me zoom out a little bit here. Then we have to print the speed. OK, 
Okay, now once we've done that, we then move on and we say we'll do this thing five times, right? Which is what? Uh, call the break method and print the speed. So the program itself, not really all that interesting, right? So this is an example, you know, it's supposed to be simple. It's just, hey, let's write a class and uh, let's invoke its methods a bunch of times just to get our feet wet here, okay? So let's make a class diagram. Next up, let's make a class diagram for, um, um, for the so class. Double click on simple class here, and then I'll go ahead and drag this to make this a little bigger. And remember with UML class diagrams, they're divided into thirds. Right, so the top third is going to be the name of the class as you would type the code. So in this case, it, there's an explicit requirement that says write a class name par, so that's going to be the name. Uh, so that's the top third. The middle third is all of the attributes that the class should have. So we've got um, your model, right? That's one attribute. We've got make, that's another. We've got speed, that's another. So, you know, again, we've prepended double underscores here to indicate that they should be. Um, private, right? That's 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 the Python convention. Okay, now the bottom third of a UML class diagram, doesn't matter what language you're using, right? The top third of the diagram is going to be the name of the class, middle is going to be the class attributes, bottom third is going to be for the methods. So this tells us, or our requirements tell us, that we have to um, have an initializer, right? And that initializer is going to need to have three parameters, right? So all methods uh, that belong to a Python class, they have to have at least one parameter. You have to put this self parameter in there, so I'll include it here. So self, and then I have to have a parameter for the year. So I'll just call that uh, year, um, or maybe YM for your model. And then um, then I have to have one for make, right? So I'll just call that M. Okay, so that's my initializer method. Then I have to have a method called accelerate. Okay, it's just going to have the self uh, parameter, and then I have to have break. That just has the self parameter also, and then I have get speed. Okay, that just has the self parameter also. Okay, so that is um, going to be my UML class diagram. All right, so let's go ahead and write this code up for this. Um, I got my plan on the left-hand side, and I also um, have that. Went ahead and put the UML diagram underneath my plan there. So what do I have to do? Well, in order to create the car object, I'm going to have to have the class. Right? So I'll go ahead and write that first. And then we'll define the initializer. That's going to be the first method that we have to have here. Okay, And that's going to have the self parameter. And then those two uh, parameters that I'm adding to support the uh, argument passing for the your model and the make, okay, and so I'm going to create the your model uh, attribute, and it's going to be initialized with the ym parameter, and then we're going to do the same thing for the make, okay, and that's initialized with the m parameter, and then we're going to create uh, speed. And that's supposed to be initialized as zero according to the requirements. Okay, so first uh, method here, the initializer method, also takes care of creating the three at class attributes. Right, so let's do accelerate next. Okay, and it's just got the one parameter, the self, and that's responsible for changing speed um, by five, right? So we add five to our speed. Oops, this is fine. Okay, then I've got the break method. Okay, and that's just gonna do the same thing or a similar thing, just subtract five each time. And then we've got the uh, get speed uh, method. Okay, no double underscores in front of these methods, they're not supposed to be private. Uh, no underscores means that you know, anybody can use them, nothing special about these methods. Uh, so get speed is just gonna simply return um, the uh, speed attribute. Okay, so that should do it for my class. So now let's implement the logic for the program. Okay, um, oh, what the heck, I'll create a main function uh, to encapsulate the mainline logic. Okay, so what do we have to do? 
we have to uh, create a car object. So we're going to instantiate class car. That's going to create a car object in memory. So I have to pass a couple values to uh, its initializer as arguments. So the year model, I'll pass it as a string since um, this year isn't going to be used in any kind of arithmetic uh, operations by this class. Um, I'll preserve it as a string. Uh, let's see here. And then for uh, the make, right? That's the other thing I have to do here. We'll call it a Toyota. Right? Toyota, Toyota Prius or something. Okay, fine. Um, and then once we've done that, what do we have to do? Call the accelerate method and print the speed. We have to do that five times. So I'll use a loop for that. Target variable isn't going to do anything uh, for this loop. That's fine. Um, don't need it. So we'll call c.accelerate because we have to do that. Call the accelerate method five times. And then we're going to call get speed uh, five times and just print the speed on the screen. So we see that I get speed. Okay. And then once we've done that, we're gonna have to do the same thing for the other. So I can just copy and paste this um, and call that break method. Okay. It's not called it's not called decelerate. Right? It's called break. So kind of weird, but it is what it is. Okay. So I think that that's everything that we need. So let me zoom out there so you can see the code. Okay. And so let's go ahead and uh, run it. Okay. And test it, see if it works. All right, so it looks pretty good. No syntax errors anyway, so what do we have? What are, what's the uh, output here? So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So that's the result of this first loop right here, right? And then 20, 15, 10, 5, 0. That's the result of this second loop here. So if this was a homework assignment, I mean, for my students, this would this would solve the problem. This would be a valid full credit solution because the explicit requirements just said, hey, write the class according to, you know, using these names for the different uh, attributes and, and for the methods, and then call um, accelerate and get speed five times, and then call break and uh, get speed five times, you know, printing out the speed to the screen. So this would this would do that. Now it looks kind of gross. You know, it might clean up the output a little bit here if um, you know maybe we put a print statement that broke it up. Print the uh, results of uh, acceleration. I think we'll do something like that, and then um, maybe then we'll say uh, results of breaking or something. Right? That's now this wasn't required, but you know I'm just doing it just so it maybe makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. Okay, yeah, so there you go. All right, so that so that's the uh, end of the example. So what did we do in the video? Uh, we went through and had a problem we had to solve. And then we went through our three-step process. We understood what the problem was. We came up with a plan, which included using pseudocode uh, and a UML diagram, UML class diagram, and then we implemented our plan right? and then tested it to make sure what we worked. Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have further questions, feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.